Hey YouTube, I'm Jay Solens. Today we're going to show you how to train poisoning on UO Outlands with or without a shelf. We'll cover choosing the right type of poison based on your current skill, targeting the weapon, and then how to handle not dying if you fail and poison yourself. Grab your pots, let's get started. All right, so how the poison skill works is you need to use the skill poison, target a poison bottle in your backpack, and then target a non-blessed weapon. The tricky part about training poisoning is that you have a chance of poisoning yourself when you fail to apply a poison. This isn't really a problem until higher, your higher level, but it's something we'll need to code for. Uh, to make things easier and give us a starting point, let's just make a new script and record our actions. So we'll do that now. I've, I've made this example recording script. We're gonna right click, open in new window, and we're just gonna click the record button. And what we wanna do is uh, take the poisoning skill, double click, it's gonna ask us which poison we want to use, where do we want to apply the poison, and whether I fail or not. All right, if we stop this, just to review, we've used the skill poisoning, we waited for target, targeted the pot, wait for target again, and we targeted a weapon. So let's clean this up so it's a little bit more runnable, because this target is specifically that potion that is no longer there. So we could say target type, green potion, backpack. Okay, and the reason why I know that is because if we have another green potion, let's grab one real quick. Yeah. How to be prepared with this one. We have another green potion and we say greater than info on the potion bottle. It's called a green potion. You can click this little blue icon here and it will go ahead and grab, copy and paste that name, paste it over here again, green potion. So the next thing is wait for target and then it's targeting a specific weapon, which is this one. Oh wow, look at that. There's even a little info button right here. You can click that and then click info onto there. But as you can see, the serial ID matches here. But instead we want to use the name, so we're gonna Copy and paste that, target type, price, backpack. Now, if we run this again, it goes ahead and does the action without needing to know that specific bottle. Uh, what happens if we hit play here and we don't have any green potion? It actually throws a air saying there is no potion found. What we can do is wrap this in a find type, check, backpack, save. So this is our root script. Um, if you had an unlimited amount of potions in your backpack, you can just hit play on this. Oh, we also want to We'd want to loop and we would want to wait for three and a half seconds for it to finish. But this script would go ahead and cover your basic poisoning needs. Now that we have the basic poison action covered, we're not going to make sure that we have the correct poison in our backpack based on our current skill. To handle that, we're going to assume that you have kegs of poison in a bag somewhere that we're going to restock from. Here's my example is I have a chest here and it's got three bags. Uh, the first bag here is regular poison kegs. And then my other bag has different types of poison in it. It happens to be lesser. And then my third is empty. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to set up a restock agent. We'll go to restock agent one, the agents tab. We'll say add target. Click a keg and click one. A keg is a keg whether it's filled or not. Even if you happen to add target on the poison keg, it's the same thing. They're the same ID. The only thing that's different is hue. So in order to trick this, we need to make sure that our restock supply is only the same type inside the bag. Um, so the other thing that we want to do is make sure that we have an organizer agent one, which is a keg. That way when our keg is moved into our backpack after it's empty, we can then move it into the empty keg container. Okay, so now that we have a restock agent one and a organizer agent one, we can add that to our script. I'm gonna make a new one, not find type keg backpack. Let's go ahead and make this in the big window here. If not find type keg backpack, then we wanna restock one and then we will wait for target and then target our backpack that contained our regular poison. Now we can do it by serial or we can make it a variable. I'll just to give you an example of this, correctly took a keg out of this backpack and put it in our backpack. Instead of using a target here, we can actually use a script variable. We'll head over to scripts. So if we click add, we can target our bag and then we'll basically call a restock container regular kegs. Now if we go back over to our script, we can then target restock regular kegs. Save that. I'm going to move this back into this bag. Play and it correctly grabbed a container. So what happens if you try to use a name that doesn't exist here, like kegs2, if we save and play? You actually get an error, and the error says cannot convert argument to uint. If you ever see that error, it normally means that you don't have a variable set up. Um, so for example, this, this variable doesn't exist. So we just need to fix the name, and then it should correctly work. Now let's assume that the um, next step is to actually get this keg into a poison. If find type keg in our backpack, we want to de click type keg backpack. Wait 500 milliseconds just for it to finish. And if 
when the keg is empty and you try to click it, it actually gives the message, the keg is empty. Here's this message, the keg is empty. Organizer one. Oh, that's another thing. We want to wait for our restock agent to run. Give it two and a half seconds. And if, okay. So basically what this is going to say is if we click the keg and it's empty, we want to move the keg into the organizer one agent, which I don't think we set the bag. Even though we added the type, we didn't set the hot bag. So now the, the bag is correctly set as organizer one. If we don't find a keg, we want to restock with the poison. If we do find a keg, double click it. If we get this as a message that the keg is empty, we want to move that keg back to the empty container. Play. Okay, now that we have the basic how to poison your weapons script, and we also have a restock script, let's put them together into something that's runnable. We'll head over to the Outland skill list, poisoning. We're going to do another example. We'll name it runnable. And we'll basically take this part of the script there, and a keg restock, copy, and save it. It's looping, which is what we want. Let's go ahead and open this bigger. What we're saying is we don't have a keg in our backpack, restock it. If we do find a keg, then we want to double click it. If the keg is empty, we want to rerun the organizer agent, and then replay. Replay will kick us back up at the top. So if we have a fine type keg backpack here, then everything's good. Else, overhead, no keg found. 34 red seconds and replay. So basically that will give us a message over and over again saying that we don't have a keg. Now if we get down here, we're gonna assume we have a green potion. Else, we'll do the same thing, a potion found. So just give us some feedback. Now if we save and play this, this should just work. We have a green thing, we have a potion. Oh no, we've made a grave mistake and it poisoned us. Let's stop the script. So even though we have a basic script that's working here, we want to make sure that we don't kill ourselves. Let's add a health check. If hit points is greater than 50, and if else, overhead, you might die. So I'm at 43, if I hit save and play, it's going to correctly say, okay, you might die. Let's not do that. And as you can see, it's ticking down here. So what we can do is we can say, wow, poisoned. Is it poisoned? Am I spelling that wrong? while poisoned and while make some space down here so if we're if we're poisoned we want to try to avoid doing some stuff so if find type info on a orange potion which is an orange potion so if we're poisoned we have an orange potion in our backpack you click type orange potion backpack this will correctly try to help us stay alive the other thing we can do is if find type yellow potion backpack and hit point is less than 50 play this is basically going to tell us that we're we might die so it's not going to want to run you can also add this check at the very top just to say hey are we below 50 and we have a yellow potion drink it play if i correctly drank a potion there be able to apply the potion poison all right i'm going to let this run and let's see if we get uh poisoned again and if it, if it saves us but cheat and i'm going to drink a poison potion and it worked, it drank the cure. The way to make sure you don't die is, obviously you can have somebody else trying to heal you, have a character on bandage over and over again, or you can just go ahead and invest in some heal and orange potions, and the script here will make sure that you don't die. All right, cool, so now that we have a rerunnable script, we wanna make sure that we are grabbing the correct poison to apply and, uh, based on our skill. So let's go ahead and add skill checks now. Make a new script, call it example, runnable skill checks. And how we know we want to train is we actually can use the wiki. The wiki tells us which skill we want to use. I'm sorry, which poison we want to use. But just a high level breakdown. It's going to be regular to 55, greater to 80. Like, let's see, I have this over here. Train poison using wish shelf. Less than 50 go to the vendor. 55 we're going to use regular. 80 is grady. 80 is grady. 80 is going to be greater. 100 is going to be deadly and up to 120 is lethal. So assuming you're using a restock agent the entire time, like let's assume you don't have a shelf. We're going to review that script and it's going to be training poisoning with no shelf. The requirements are you're going to need separate bags containing different types of poisons. Heals and cures are optionals, but you should have somebody healing you. We just kind of went over that. You're going to need one bottle in your backpack 
and then each type of keg, poison keg in different containers. Uh, again, to give you an example, what we covered is this first bag is regular. The next bag would be some other type of poison. The third bag is empties. And this script, if you're running it as is from GitHub, you're gonna wanna set up restock container, regular kegs, greater kegs, deadly kegs, and lethal kegs. And we're just gonna go through this script now. We're kind of doing the same check. I'm trying to make sure you have a weapon. Default is the Christ. I'm using list to say, what's our skill check and where, which container are we trying to grab? Basically I'm saying, while I'm not dead, and my poisoning skill is greater than or equal to 100, I'm done. If it's less than 50, we need to go train. Let me fix that. If it's less than 50, we need to go train. If we're less than 55, we have a skill check of 55, and then our keg container is going to be the restock regular kegs. If it's 80, it's gonna be greater kegs, 100 deadly, 20 lethal. Now, I need to make sure I have at least one empty bottle. If we have kegs in our backpack, I want to clear my bag of any kegs. So I'm running organizer agent one, I'm looping the skill check as skill checker. So skill check is only gonna contain one value, which happens to be the actual if statement that I wanna run. I'm saying why my skill in poisoning is less than 55. We're gonna overhead 55. If I don't have a keg in my backpack, which I shouldn't at the very beginning, I'm gonna restock agent one, and then I'm gonna try to grab the keg from the correct container. If I still don't have a keg, then I'm missing a keg and it's gotta restart. You know, I didn't find one. That goes back to our other script. Now I'm gonna double click the keg and then I use a different way of checking, but if I place a thing in my backpack, I'm good. If not, then I wanna run the organizer agent. If I find a green potion in my backpack and my hit points is greater than 50, I'm gonna use the skill of poisoning. This is the skill we had, the script we had before. It happens to try to use a Christ if you have it or not. It's going to use the weapon you selected. Wait the 300. If we are not healthy, drink a potion. If we're poisoned, drink a po uh, potion. Uh, he heals and cures. And basically, this script is runnable. So, again, the only other thing I set up is the only thing I have up set up right now is a restock regular cakes agent, which is fine. I'm going to hit save and play on this. Now, it happened to move a full keg into the empty keg container because part of my script it assumes that you're hitting play on this thing and it's just going to run itself and as you can see it's outputting 55 because it's trying to run to the skill 55 before it moves on to the next keg type if there's any questions about this feel free to hit me up on discord or in the comments below but hopefully by breaking down the earlier stuff this script makes sense um, obviously skills and for each loops are a little bit different, but take a look at this, recreate it, rerun it. But again, if you have any questions, let me know. All right, the next script that we're gonna cover is the actual shelf script. If we run over to the outland skill list, poisoning an example with shelf, same thing, I kind of have some additional info here. We want a shelf stock with poison, seals and cures. It's saying if your skill's less than 55, you're also gonna need the same things we just set up, right? Because um, regular poisons don't sit on the shelf. So restock container regular kegs. Does the same check here. Now what's nice about the shelf check is it's a lot easier. We don't have to do the grab a different keg out of a different bag because all of our potions will sit on the shelf. If our skills less than or greater than 100, we're done. If it's less than 50, go train. 55, we're gonna run the script that we created earlier. That's basically saying I need a bottle, grab a keg, restock agent one, Missing a keg if we don't find one. Using a keg of regular potion, poison. I keep saying potion every time I want to say poison. All right, now we get to the fun stuff. This script will actually edit our loadout on the shelf to be based on what we want to see. So right now my loadout's empty. And as you can see here, it's going to basically scroll down. It's going to say, all right, we're going to grab the shelf. It wants to clear the loadout. It's going to edit your loadout. It's going to add 10 heals, 10 cures, and then try to select the correct poison potion based on your current skill. If we're less than 50, it's gonna exit. If we're 55, it's not gonna grab anything because we already have a poison potion in our bag based on the keg double click. If we're over 55, then it's gonna try to grab a greater. Uh, if not, then poison, uh, sorry, deadly, lethal. And then it's gonna hit the resupply button, which is gonna put the potions in our bag. And then it's back to our regular script of like where we're trying to use the poisoning skill, green potion, Christ, etc. All right, so again, if I hit save and play on that, it's going to run the same thing. It's going to try to do that. It's going to edit my loadout with heals and cures and rerun my poison script. 
So what happens right now is every time it runs is it goes ahead and restocks and edits the loadout. So is this the most efficient way? Mm, not sure, but it is the one way that you can literally just hit this button and walk away and come back in 24 hours and hopefully have GM poisoning. If you're curious on how I actually figured out how to edit the loadout in this restock shelf, it's very similar to what we did at the very beginning and I just recorded the actions and then I tried to make sure that I could line them all up. Uh, to give you an example, let's close that down and we'll say new example recording shelf. We're going to start with an empty script forward and I can double click here and that opens up the shelf. Okay, And this is where the wait for gump comes in and then I can edit current loadout, which is this gump response five clear click again. So this action basically edits, clears, and then I can say five and boom, boom. So edits, clears, selects a heal potion, adds another five to it, selects a cure potion, adds another five to it, and then we can hit resupply and close it out. And I actually add the gump close to the very top because that way it's rerunnable. Sometimes with the double clicks of gumps, like for whatever reason, they air for me. So I'd like to make sure that I always close the gump at the very beginning, save and play. You can see that it added it. So what do you, like, let's say I wanted to, to have 15 cures instead of 10. I can actually just copy and paste this 16 again, save and play, and move to 15. What you could do is set up different hot buttons depending on your character, right? Because maybe based on your skill, if you have healing, for example, you would want to grab bandages, right? So uh, you could have a, a script that said, uh, you know, if skill healing greater than zero, and if, then we can record editing bandages up to whatever we want, 100, up. And again, what this is doing is it's saying, hey, click the bandages as a check mark, and then set it to 100. So if I save and play this, I happen to have healing on this character, hopefully. I do, I do, so 50. All right, hopefully that gives you an example how we made the edit script. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Be sure to check out my other videos, like the alchemy scripts, for example, get you to get you to 120 alchemy. Then you can use all those alchemy potions to train poisoning. It's going to be great. Drop a note in the comments if you have any questions, concerns, like it, hate it, love it, whatever. I'll see you out there. Peace.